I grew up in the San Fernando Valley in the city of Pacoima. That place was known for violence. My uncle got shot in front of my house. Drive-bys, you would hear gun claps. It's the gang life and that's just how it is. Soccer was a big deal for me. As a young boy, my father trained me like day and night. And he would say like, you know, if this was your money, like if this ball was your money, don't let nobody take your money. Taught me to do bicycle kicks and I remember scoring a bicycle kick and like at a championship game and everybody was going wild. I went to a club team. We got to travel around the world. The words that my dad would tell me about soccer did start to lose its credibility in my life because I started to see him make mistakes in life. My parents were addicted to, to crystal meth. I started to sense different things going up, you know, like, dang, why are they taking so long to open the door? And when I go in there, they spray like all kinds of air fresheners because it was either the weed smoke or the meth smoke. And they would tell me things. I would never put them on blast. I would never tell them, like, why do you do this? In my heart, I'd just like have this grudge where I was like, man, like, you know, why should I miss it? I played soccer still, but sometimes I didn't want to play. I'd rather be with my friends. I'd rather be out on the streets, going out robbing houses, and getting money, and smoking weed. Ended up tagging on the streets, and then you see me on billboards and rooftops and freeways. And that's what I started to love to do. You know, I started to just love the streets. My dad, he would, he would hate it though. He would hate me for not going out playing soccer. There were a few times where I was doing graffiti and I ended up getting chased out of the yard wherever I was painting at on the run from the police. And there was a time I got caught while we were in the middle of our piece. We seen some guys roll up from the side and we seen these guys pull out walkie talkies like, yeah, hey. And then so right away we knew like, drop everything, let's go. We hopped this fence. I had left my backpack there with paint and everything. I did remember me leaving an ID in there. I remember like wanting to leave the city. Like my uncle Edgar is living in Santa Monica and going to church and uh, he comes through and he's asking me, Junior, do you want to come move into Santa Monica? And I'm like, yes, this is like the perfect getaway. I'm at this Christian school and cops come and get me. There was one thing that had happened that day where like, I would never forget. My principal, Jack Merford, had came up to me and he's like, hey, and he's talking to the cops saying, well, you know, can I pray for him before he goes? And I can remember him praying for me. I was longing, I was hurting for something, you know. I would see at the school students and stuff like that. And I would see people just like happy and see their families. And I'm just like, yeah, like, I don't have a family. You know, I don't have a family like as good as yours. And I was really insecure, I was hurting. I thought it was radical because he prayed for me out, you know, in front of everybody, in front of cops and students. I'd never seen that before. Never been the same, you know. After that prayer, I'll probably never forget that, you know. This is what I needed.